What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are at our Duchess yard. We have quite a bit going on here today. I have my father here, Rodrigo and Guillermo are both here. If you hear a pressure washer in the background, that is Rodrigo and Guillermo. They are currently pressure washing the patio and some of the house. It is a bit of a maintenance day. I'm gonna go work on a truck after this. My father's building a shelf thing for my sister's wedding, which is next weekend. So we have a ton of different things going on today, but I'm gonna start here with the pickleball court. I mentioned briefly in a past video that all of the big pieces of angle iron, they were six by four, half inch. That might be three eighths, I'm not sure uh six by four by 20 feet long angle iron i picked them up from a local iron workshop to our to our main shop and brought them up here on our aluminum trailer but i didn't really explain what they were for the entire perimeter got angle iron around it they even cut 45s into the base and made all of the seams nice and everything and then obviously they, they a little bit Obviously they laid plastic down as a vapor barrier, taped all of the seams and then wire mesh and it is ready for a new slab. You may be wondering, why are we pouring a slab on top of an old slab? This was originally a pickleball court. It did have a basketball hoop at one point that got taken out, but my parents want to make this more of a professional court and get it coated and striped and everything. And the company that's gonna do it in order to warranty their work, they require the vapor barrier, double vapor barrier. So it's two layers of six mil plastic. Every seam is taped and then wire mesh. The old slab did not have the vapor barrier. It did have the wire mesh, but they wouldn't warranty it without the vapor barrier and they won't warranty it without pictures of everything. So the slab was poured years ago and we do not have any pictures of all of the wire mesh in it. So it kind of left us at no option. If we really want to coat it and get the warranty, we kind of have to redo it. So the angle iron is for the perimeter of the entire slab. The old slab is underneath it. We didn't jackhammer it out. We didn't do anything. It is still there. You can actually kind of see one of the stripes from the old court right there. I don't know if this camera's picking it up, but that's pretty much where we're at with this. This is getting poured tomorrow and then in about a month it'll be coated. So it has to cure a little bit in order for them to come and coat it. So we're going to pour it tomorrow morning. I don't know if I'm going to make a video of that. It's getting poured at 7 a.m. and it's Saturday, so I may still be in my bed sleeping. But if I'm awake, I'll come over here and record some of it. Either way, moving on, I have to hop in our F600 and pull it down into the garage. We started putting the rack body back on it and the bolts that came with it did not have washers on them, either inside or outside. And there's holes right here for all of the uprights. And you can kind of see on the metal, it's getting worn out. So I picked up some galvanized washers. We're gonna put a washer on both the outside and the inside of every single one. And then there's also a couple pieces for the front horseshoe, which we gotta figure out a way to get up there. It is very heavy and I'm probably gonna to have to use either a loader or a forklift or something to get it up there and bolt it all together. But let me pull it down into the garage and we'll work on all of the bolts and washers back here and then eventually move on to that top part. All right, I got the truck in the garage. I have my tools here, three quarter wrench, three quarter ratchet and a bolt. So this bolt goes in like that. I gotta have to wiggle that a little bit. There we go. But that's a perfect example. Look how rusted it is from the head of the bolt there wearing into the metal. So that's why I bought some galvanized washers. Throw one on. Yeah, it's, it looked like they had some Loctite on here, but I'm not putting any on because we take this off in the winter. But that's what I'm going to do to every single one. And also, 
on the inside here, which is very dark. I don't think, yeah, you can't really see anything. Either way, you get the point. I'm gonna put one on the inside and outside of everything and then bolt it all down. guys we got the ladder rack complete this front section is super heavy and it's over the cab of the truck so there's no easy way to put it on here plus you have to get it over these tubes so you kind of can't do it by hand and even if you could you're not tall enough to reach up here anyway so we used our forklift I don't know if I've showed that forklift in any of our videos yet it's brand new we just got it like a week maybe a week and a half ago so we'll walk over there in a second and look at it but last year when i took this rack apart i lost the four pins that go in here i thought i put them back in this piece but apparently not so we're gonna have to source some sort of pins or bolts or something it looks like a hitch pin might work in here who knows i'm gonna find something somewhere one of these days and we'll get this all bolted together but for the most part it's pretty much done this is all pinned all the way here all on the backs pinned and this is pinned here plus i got all of the bolts swapped out well not swapped out but pulled out and put back in with washers so we should have no more of that issue but let's take a look at our new forklift here this thing is pretty nice 
we needed a forklift here to get stuff off the shelves that we have. The tool cats work for the lower shelves, but the top shelves, actually, this is a bad example because those top shelves are way too close to the ceiling. You will hit the ceiling with the bar there before you can even get anything with the forks. But in the lower garage, you have a lot more room. So getting our Western plows and stuff on the racks with this forklift will be much easier. Uh, did I turn the propane off before? Let's see. Let's open it up. It's open. Okay. Just show you this real quick. The only thing it doesn't have, which I wish it did have, is uh, hydraulic forks. Well, uh, whatever you want to call it for sliding and opening and closing the space between the forks. You have everything else. Just if you want to slide the forks out wider, you got to do it manually. Also has a nice dash here. Runs nice and quiet. You have your parking brake here. Forward and reverse. And then these are all of your controls. Obviously you have up and down. This one is your forward and back tilt. And then this one slides everything left and right. But as you can see, the forks slide with it. So it's not, it's not opening the forks up at all. It's just moving them left or right. But overall, it's a very nice machine. This is our first, I don't know if it's Doosan or Doosan or what it is, but it's the first one we've ever had. And it's pretty nice. It's not as strong as the forklift that we have in our main shop, but for what we do here, we should have no issues. Plus, we usually have tool cats here if we have something that this can't handle, or we have loaders here. So, oh, that, there we go, got it. So, I think that is gonna wrap it up for this one. I'm just gonna help my dad for the rest of the day build whatever he's building for my sister's wedding and I think Rodrigo and Guillermo are gonna be back here tomorrow to help these guys with the slab. The same guys that poured our last slab are coming here to pour this. So should be no issues with that, but that's gonna wrap it up. If you guys have any questions or comments, definitely leave them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Hope you guys enjoyed it. See you guys next time. Peace.